Hey, what's going on guys? Hope everybody's doing well and having a great day. I wanted to offer some clarity regarding the TV that I'm assuming malfunctioned during the geomagnetic storm we had back on May 10th and 11th because this TV that you're seeing here in the still image worked fine prior to the geomagnetic storm. Just after the geomagnetic storm, I turned it on and it was doing this. It had these lines through the center that would not go away. It was damaged. Nobody touches the TV but me and I've probably only used that TV 20 times in six months. It wasn't even six months old. But before we get started here, I'd like to give a big shout out to Justin Hardin. I don't know if you can see this right here or not. Thank you, Justin. I asked the other day if everybody would share the, the video and and Justin went, went above and beyond. He shared the video on every single platform I think that's ever been made. And I appreciate that a lot. And it did help. So if you guys want to help me out in any way, um, it's free. All you got to do is share the video. This video coming up, I think you're going to find informative. It explains the way I understand geomagnetic storms. And the information that you're about to, to hear in this video comes from a scientist that's been studying physics for many, many years, and he knows what he's talking about. And I hope this video offers some clarity regarding the, the recent geomagnetic storm and, and what happened to my TV behind me. But again, big thanks to, to Justin Hardin for your super sharing. That was really cool. Thanks again, Justin. Okay, so I assumed that the geomagnetic storm damaged the TV. Why didn't it damage the other devices in this room and in this house? I don't know, but I want to explain why I assumed it was the, the geomagnetic storm that did it. It wasn't because of some particles moving through the air. It's the exact opposite. The Earth absorbs this energy, and the energy turns into electrical currents in the ground. And there could have been something unique to this wall, something unique to this area, where some rogue energy, there was a, a surge of energy from the geomagnetic storm that found its way to the TV that had a weak component in the TV, unlike the rest of the device is in the house, that component was susceptible to the energy from the geomagnetic storm and caused it to permanently malfunction. I had to return the TV, obviously, because it was not usable. The one behind me is a brand new one. But I want to read this article because it's very informative over here at spaceweather.com. It explains what happened during the geomagnetic storm. I've studied this before many years ago, and I understand ground currents, electrical currents in the ground that are there all the time every single day. But during geomagnetic storms, they are exponentially amplified. Check this out. Rocks and soil electrified by the superstorm. They're calling the, the historic geomagnetic storm now a superstorm. Across the USA on May 10th and 11th, sky watchers marveled at bright displays of aurora borealis during the biggest geomagnetic storm in decades. Little did they know something else was happening underfoot. Strong electrical currents were surging through rocks and soil. The biggest voltages along the U.S. eastern seaboard and in the Midwest were as much as 10,000 times normal. Here's a close-up view of the map, the purple being the highest readings. Look at all the purple up in the northeastern United States. There's something in the ground up here in these areas that the geomagnetic storm energy likes. Also up here in northwestern Minnesota, southern Wisconsin, Southern Oklahoma. All of the red saw amplified readings during the geomagnetic storm all across the United States, anywhere from 10,000 times above normal to, to 50 times above normal. And let me continue on with the article. Back in March of 1989, voltages only a little stronger than the ones shown above brought down the entire Hydro-Quebec power system. This is one of the transformers right here that took a big surge of energy, probably like the TV, not this one, but this one right here. It could have taken a small surge of energy and caused it to malfunction. Do you know how much energy it must have taken to cause this giant transformer to malfunction? Probably quite a bit. But continuing on, the resulting Great Quebec blackout plunged millions of Canadians into darkness. This time, however, power grid stayed up. We haven't heard of any serious problems so far, reports Christopher Bach of NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center. 
Balk also leads an effort at NOAA to model geoelectric fields during solar storms. The map above is a snapshot from a real-time display that takes into account the 3D conductivity of the Earth and ongoing geomagnetic activity. A computer at the Space Weather Prediction Center crunches the data to produce minute-by-minute -minute estimates of electricity in the ground. When researchers talk about geoelectric fields, they use units of volts per km. Earth's crust naturally contains quiet time fields measuring as little as 0.01 VKM. During geomagnetic storms, these values skyrocket. On May 10th and 11th, geoelectric amplitudes exceeded 10 VKM in Virginia and 9 in the upper Midwest, says Jeffrey Love, a key member of the collaboration at the USGS. These are very high. For comparison, we estimate that geoelectric amplitudes reached almost 22 VKM in Virginia during the March 1989 storm. 22! This means that the May 2024 storm was, electrically speaking, about as half as intense as the storm that blacked out Quebec 35 five years ago. That's too close for comfort. However, power companies have taken measures to improve the resilience of their systems. No one would welcome another storm as intense as the one in 1989, says Love. Real-time electric field maps are published 24-7 on the NOAA website. During the next geomagnetic storm, you can watch in real time to follow the, the currents in the ground during the geomagnetic storm. And again, here's a look at the map. This is where they were the most intense. And I want to ask you folks that are in the Midwestern United States and in the far northeastern United States and even along the eastern seaboard here in Virginia and, and West Virginia, parts of Pennsylvania, did you guys notice any glitches in your electrical components that you use on a day-to-day -day basis? Maybe your monitors, your smartphones, maybe your lights in your house flickered. Did you notice any difference in your TVs like mine. Somebody else left a comment that they had to return their TV as well because it had lines in the center just like mine did. So that was not a coincidence, at least not in my world. I'm convinced that that was from the geomagnetic storm because it happened within hours of the geomagnetic storm impacting planet Earth. So if you guys were impacted in any way electrically, please leave a comment down below in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Have a super day and be safe out there.